opening it up for questions. Uh, I need to understand I don't have all the answers for this at all. Um, I have uh, some some good ideas, I think. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think it, at this point in time, I'm, I, I'm comfortable enough to, to share it. If there are people that are interested in, in making this uh, a reality, I, this is what I'm doing this for. <laughs> uh, let's do this together. I am a philosopher, musician, and analyst. My name is Andre Davis. I've had an idea in my heart for decades that I have kept to myself. Now, I want to share that idea with you. It's no mystery that as humans, we thrive when cooperation is at the forefront of our efforts. We feel a primal joy. In cooperation, we have evidence that we are not alone in this world, then why do we recognize and contribute to cooperative community resources so infrequently? Why doesn't this positivity and enthusiasm for positive social engagement remain a priority? Let's answer those questions together. What will it take to empower our communities? Let's learn what it is to hello and welcome to another episode um, of this I just had uh, a meal and uh, I'd gone to the grocery store to eat it um, uh, or to, to get the stuff for it. Basically, it was just rice, black beans, I uh, got some chopped up onions and uh, a package of, of mushrooms. Uh, and I cooked all that up and mixed it all together uh, when I was uh, single I was a, when I was before I got married and, and when I first lived on my own um, and didn't and just and I wasn't really interested in, in making a lot of food anyway um, but it was also a way to save money uh, it's, you know cheap stuff to eat like, have you ever heard Dave Ramsey or the Ramsey show rice and beans whatever um it's good advice sorry don't mean whatever <laughs> but uh uh but the point is i ended up eating that regularly uh, and i'd find different ways to make it i'd maybe bake it sometimes or i don't know fry it or i'd find different stuff but uh so today i was hungry and wanted to just make a make some lunch and have some some prepared foods I figured I'd have a little bit left over uh, and could uh, have those throughout the week. Um, so I was forced to make a larger amount than I wanted to. Uh, typically, I would have made half of what I did and then I just have a couple left over. Uh, but I had to use uh, two cups of water. Um, uh, actually, I had, yeah, I ended up using four cups of liquid because I used two cups of broth and two cups of water. And that was because the pot that I had to cook it in, the other night I ended up burning uh, my my smaller pot, which I would have cooked the rice in. So I was left with a big old stew pot. And I was cooking in that, and I felt it was too shallow, so I had to put more water in to make it higher and ended up cooking uh, four four cups of water or of liquid, which yields two cups of rice, which inflates to however much I'm putting into my stomach, but not all at one time. And the, <clears throat> what I ended up cooking um, was a lot. Uh, I, I had a bowl and still had like a huge pot left over. And the bowl was too much for me. Like it was just a regular size, which you'd see a, soup bowl or a cereal bowl and uh that was 
too much for me. I probably could have eaten half of that. Um, and then with all of everything that I had left over, I have six containers plus another glass bowl and probably each of those uh, could be split into two more. So 12 and then and it could have fit into two more. Each one could fit into two separate bowls. But where I ate more than I could because I'm 43 and don't know portion control yet, it's, you know, you could probably cut that into four meals. So basically I made six times four plus, plus there was another bowl left over too. So all of that cost me like $15. And <coughs> excuse me, the point of all of that, I was, I, it kind of reminded me um, the, the value of like doing everything, you know, creating multiple meals at once. Like I spent probably, I spent under $15 for, for the, for the food that I got and the amount of time that it took me to cook that, uh, it took me about, I don't know, 30 minutes to 40 minutes to cook it all, uh, when it all was said and done. So if you multiply that time out by, uh, what would you say? 24 different meals. Uh, that's a lot of time. Uh, pl and then you've got the dollar savings as well. So it's it just, I don't know, that kind of thing, uh, really makes me think more about Million Dollar Fist and, and the idea of the community kitchen. I think uh, in the community kitchen, uh, which I brought up in the last, last time I, I talked, uh, <clears throat> having a place where everybody in the community can go at any point in time and have a meal uh, or cook a meal or prepare. Um, and it, it's it's operating under the premise that we should be able to eat that it, we shouldn't as people we should be able to eat as as a tribe of people we should be making sure that the people around us are eating uh, I think that we can separate the the desire for for money. <clears throat> And the uh, need to to support everybody else, and just consider this part of a community as opposed to thinking of it as some sort of business venture or anything like that. And I think that's a good first step because everybody, most people, can agree that that around food things go well, like. Uh, holidays are always centered around food, usually. Um, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, any gatherings or whatever, I, growing up for myself, uh, you know, we, we have family dinners on every Sunday or whatever where other people in the family will come, not just the people that live in the household. Or when you go out for somebody's birthday or something, you know, go out to eat at dinner or, or have a birthday dinner at home. But, but the point is, food's a pretty common thing food is a necessity uh and i think if we can start building a community around that in the in the sense of a community kitchen um then that that gives us a good foot in the door to to reach out to to the community about other things and then we can identify things within those um those meetings that we have within the community kitchen um through conversation, through uh, through events, uh, we can we can use the community kitchen as more than just an eating place. It's, it wouldn't, you know, just be a restaurant. If and especially if it's to be operated twenty four seven. So the the idea between the community, be, the idea behind the community kitchen would be to have a kitchen uh, that acts as a place for food for anybody who needs it or wants it and a place for uh, shelter as well. So it would, it wouldn't be just your cafeteria uh, in a, in a, uh, in a school gym or something like that. I mean, it's, it's a legitimate, legitimate building 
uh, with amenities that people would want to to uh, use. So, um, and then and also with the so what I was getting at was not only can you eat there, but that's a good opportunity for uh, restaurants in the area, let's say, uh, to train up their staff. So if you've got new hires coming on or um, have hires that are there that just need to be brushed up on, on training more time than you can offer to pay them to go in, if you if the community kitchen's available for people to go in and, and use and, and, and learn trades and skills, uh, that's a great opportunity for, and that helps everybody in the area at that point. Uh, people switch jobs all the time. So if, if they're all going through that same kind of training program, there's a bit of consistency. Um, and that can be improved as well. If, if businesses in the area want to go ahead and support the community by maybe teaching classes to people on, on, on how to do things. And that adds a little bit more of your own of, of that of that business's flair into the community um so there's opportunities for that as well um but yeah so I, I was just thinking about that after i was eating and feeling very very full um and i figured it would be a good um thing to mention here uh at this time but now i'm going to go lay back down and digest some more <laughs> <laughs>